caught any of my earlier videos, you may recall my definition of economics is the study of what are you going to do with what you've got. I think our ultimate goal for each of us individually is happiness. By whatever definition you choose, you want to maximize your happiness. Businesses, we argue, want to maximize their profit. Generally true. Societies, in the macroeconomic sense, want to, satis want to satisfy or maximize uh, their level of overall enjoyment, productivity, standard of living. When we talk about the level of happiness an individual enjoys in economics, we struggle with exactly what we mean, and we, we have developed or uh, had developed for us the term of utility. Utility means the pleasure or satisfaction or happiness that you or I enjoy as a result of consuming a product or partaking in a particular event. We might, might ask, for example, how much uh, utility are you getting out of watching this video? Now, maybe it's usefulness, I hope. I doubt seriously it's a whole lot of happiness, okay? But what benefit are you receiving from watching this video? What is the utility of this video to you? So utility means usefulness, benefit, enjoyment, happiness, pleasure. Several definitions in there, several terms. In addition to the concept of utility, we also use the term marginal utility. Marginal remaining, you may recall, additional. So what is your additional or added benefit or usefulness of watching this video? How much extra did it add to your sense of knowledge or accomplishment or happiness? What is the marginal utility? Another example, you and I go out to the bar and we have a beer. What's your marginal utility for that first beer? How much did you enjoy it? And if it's been a hot day and maybe we've been out working in the, in the hot sun, that first beer may have very high marginal utility. What happens to when you drink the second beer? Do you enjoy it as much as the first one? Now, I didn't say you didn't enjoy it, but did you enjoy it as much as the first one? And the answer is probably, if not on the second, certainly by the third. By that third beer, you're thinking, this is pretty good, but man, that first beer was so great. And so now we're talking about the marginal utility for the first beer, for the second beer, for the third beer. You better stop there, right? But we're talking about what happens to marginal utility, the marginal utility of something, as you consume more of it, or for activities as you do more of it. At some point, not necessarily immediately, at some point, the marginal utility of one more beer or one more hour of playing baseball, at some point that marginal utility begins to decrease or decline. We refer to that as diminishing marginal utility. The more you involve yourself in an activity, the longer you spend it. Uh, if you go to a pizza place and you're starving to death, that first slice of pizza may be heaven on earth. But if you are crazy enough to eat the seventh and eighth and ninth slice of pizza, what do you suppose has happened to their marginal utility? They are definitely declining and perhaps even becoming negative. So, we have the concept of diminishing marginal utility, and in economics we talk about the law of diminishing marginal utility. That the more you consume of something, the less you enjoy each additional unit. Now, I want to pose two questions to you about diminishing marginal utility. Question number one, is money, dollars in the United States, is money subject to the law of diminishing marginal utility. As you get additional dollars, do they mean less to you? Do they have less value to you, intrinsic value to you, than the earlier dollars you received? Now, I know they'll still buy as much as the earlier dollars, but I'm asking, for example, if you make a million dollars a year, and you and I are going to go out on the town, we're going to shoot some pool, and you drop a hundred dollar bill, how much time are you going to spend looking for that hundred dollar bill? If you make a million dollars a year, it's probably not worth a lot of your time to look for. Now if you're out there shooting pool with me, you know how long I'm going to look for that thing? As long as it takes, because a hundred dollars is pretty valuable to me. You make enough money that the additional hundred dollars, whether you would receive it or lose it, really doesn't matter a lot. If I make far less than you do, and I can assure you I do, then that $100 means more to me 
And I may spend more time looking for it. So I suggest to you that money, at some point for everyone, different points for different people, money is still subject to the law of diminishing marginal utility. Second point, are relationships subject to the law of diminishing marginal utility? Now, typically when I ask that in class, there will be a few students, and usually the young ladies, who will listen, they'll think about it, and you'll watch your eyes roll back, and they'll start going, yeah. What are they telling us? Yeah, after you've been with someone for a prolonged period of time, the newness starts to wear off. The enchantment, and the romance maybe, the enjoyment, it starts to diminish somewhat, and sometimes <laughs> rather quickly, right? And so we find that if you are then separated from that person and come back together the next day to go on a date or something like that, oh, maybe you, the high level of utility and marginal utility returns. But uh, take your favorite person in the world and go spend 72 hours chained up in a box with them. I'm thinking that maybe you'll see what diminishing marginal utility in relationships really means. So this concept, diminishing marginal utility, gives us a perspective, gives us a, a a set of terminology to talk about the way people behave and the decisions they make. Utility, utility theory is a useful way to examine things.